Hello, dear viewers, this is Star Wolf Gamer, and today I am reviewing my LEGO World War II um, D Day mock. This mock is, um, it took me one month and a half to build. It was pretty challenging in some parts, and the end result came out really, really good, in my opinion. And um, so we're going to review it, starting off with the landing craft, moving on to the beach, and into the two bunkers. I will also make a, de like a design video to show how I made this mock. You know, if you guys are interested. Um, so yeah, starting off over here, we have a bit of sea. As you can see, I made the sea calmer than the seas over there in front. So I just put some translucent studs. I did run out of um, blue pieces, that's why I didn't use a big base plate for the sea. Um, the landing craft is the first order um, transporter set, but customized, like I took off the top and stuff. So yeah, I made it a bit longer as well. Um, we'll see the bridge later on over there. So over here is where the pilot seat sits. As you can see, there's a, a steering wheel over there. And the whole um, top part of the ship got on fire. The landing craft, Higgins landing craft. It caught fire because it got hit by a shell from the bunkers. So yeah, the pilot is jumping off just in time as his seat catches fire. Um, here we have a gunner who is um, still shooting his machine gun at the bunkers, even though um, the ship is on fire. And I did detail this ship a lot with fire. As you can see, there's a lot of detail. And um, here we have, like, the commander of the ship, which sadly died. As you can see, he is totally burning out. Totally burning out. Here we have more detail. Um, I put these plates here on the... Um, first order transporter because I thought it looked pretty nice. So yeah, detail around the boat. Over there in the corner, we have more details. You can see here the sea gets rougher as it hits the beach. Um, here on the bridge is where most people are dying, sadly, because the machine guns up there are wrecking the um, troops that came out. So we have three dead. Well, that one kind of almost dead. So here this um, Aznac um, trooper or Australian New Zealand trooper. He just got shot. As you can see, he's falling. There's a bit of blood over there. I put lots of blood in this scene. Like, here we have a shotgun and some blood. Here, this guy got shot. Um, with blood coming out. Swell the sea. Like, put a bunch of blood around here. Here, um, on this part of the beach, um, it starts with, um, dark, um, sand color. We have a medic, which is pretty angry. He's running up. Um, and try to save this um, British soldier whose arm got exploded off and yeah, pretty bloody um, let's see moving over here we have a soldier who is running over there to that foxo hole who is going to try and like help the troopers so, yeah, he's running over there here we have a soldier um, uh, taking refuge um, behind this Barricade. If you guys ever seen D-Day, you'd know these barricades are around to prevent tanks from coming up. So let's take a look at him. So yeah, he's got a nice backpack, American soldier. Um, and most of the weapons in this mock are brick arms. If you guys don't know them, they make really good weapons, which are compatible with Lego. So yeah, this is the medic. Um, here, to make the ground go higher, I put pieces and then covered it with plates. Um, here we have a British or Scottish or Ireland soldier, you know, from Britain. Yeah, he's using a nice, uh, rifle from Rick Arms. I might show off the guns in, um, the, uh, um, the design video which I will make. Uh, oops, he's shooting higher up there. Okay, here we have another British soldier. This one's turned out pretty nice. Uh, he's using the same rifle as that guy. And he is hiding behind this, um... Pretty awesome barricade, in my opinion. Here, let me give you guys a nice look. I put a chain on it. I think it looks pretty badass. Here, on this part of the mock, it becomes brown as it is moving up from the beach into the mountains. Um, I did put lots of detail around here. So, over here, we have, like, the commander of the platoon who is running and trying to chuck a grenade into the bunker. And he is being shot at from all directions. Uh, as you can see, there's a nice little plate there. Um, he's got a, he's holding a grenade and a, a pistol. 
So yeah, he's running up there and trying to blow up the bunker. Here we have this awesome bazooka man, or soldier, oh, <laughs> holding a bazooka and a rocket in his other hand. Again, from Big Arms, he's using the same piece as the commander, because he's like a lieutenant or something. Again, he's hiding up behind this barricade. I made three of them. There and there. This is a bit more simpler, but still pretty cool. Ooh, pretty nice. So, yeah. uh, here more detail as it goes up, steeping up into the mountains. Um, let's take a look at this fox hole. Let me just get the other side of my table. Uh, okay. So, the fox hole, I put um, a little mine or um, explosive, and this guy's leg got blown off. Here, let me see if I can get the leg out of there. This guy's leg got freaking blown off. Here's the guy's leg. So I just threw it anywhere. So yeah, sadly for him, I don't think he's gonna make it. He's probably dead. Um, oh, I just bumped into that. So yeah, there you guys can have a better look. A big explosion happened over here. That's what make this, this foxhole. His leg got freaking blown off, as you guys know. Lots of blood, as you can see around there. And he was the radio operator. That's why he only had a pistol. The radio flew off over here. This trooper is coming over to get it. Um, here we have a American soldier holding... I forgot this machine gun's name. But it's pretty classic from World War II. And he is trying to shoot out at the bunkers. And here, over here, we have a very well special figure in my opinion. We have Indiana Jones. I put him in this mock because if you guys know his story, he actually fought in D-Day. And in World War Two and World War One as well, and a uh, piece of yeah, and he's holding his signature revolver. Well, that's the one, but yeah, put this one. And he also has a knife and a backpack. So yeah, he's, he's pretty trauma tra traumatized, I believe, because he saw um, his friend just get blown up and wrecked. Well, yeah, they're all kind of traumatized. It's war, man. And um, I did. Um, like, put accurate facts and stuff into this mock. Well, not Indiana Jones, because it doesn't exist, but, well, let's just move on. So, this rock formation, I didn't know what to do at first, but then I looked at some pictures of other D-Day mocks, and I just started messing around until I made the bunker. I made it separate from the rock formation, um, and then I made it, and I just started building around, and it turned out pretty cool. I used a bunch of these pieces, these nice, um, steep pieces, which gives out that nice little color to the mock. Here, looking at this bunker, we have nice detail over here. Um, some detail over here on the sides, at the top over there. It looks pretty, um, there's a little hole over there. Wait, I can close, oh no. Yeah, there's a little hole over there. So, in here you can't see very much, but we have an MG-42. If you guys don't know that, that's a German machine gun that was highly used in World War II. I'll show you guys that later when we get in the bunker. So yeah, and we will take a look up here later on. So let me just move this out of the way and get in the bunker part. As you can see, I did not use the Hope base plate. I kind of ran out of pieces, and yeah. But it turned out pretty nice. Here we have this beam, which just needed to stay there because the mock was going to fall. If it wasn't, it wasn't so stable. Um, here we have the troop resting place area. Um... So, let me just take this beam out of the way for now. You can get a better look in there. Here we have bunk beds. And over here we have a normal Star Wars long blaster. And a Star Wars short blaster. Because the all my, all my brick arms were being used in the mock. Well, not all, but... Yeah, and they're kept over here, kind of like the armory. Here we have a little lamp, which turns out pretty cool. Um... And here we have like a table with a cup and a bottle. Back there we have a cup, a uh, cup, a uh, cup and a bottle again. A little frying pan, a furnace, and a little crate with a knife on top. This crate's empty. Um, here we have some like, like tubes and design up here. We have more tubes. Um, that's a white piece. I should have changed that. The furnace hose is meant to simulate going up here. Yeah, more tubes because you know it's a bunker underground. We gotta do maintenance. Okay. Ah. And, as you can see, it's on a raised platform, which I believe turned out really nice. So, yeah, here's the bunk beds. Uh, we have some dial dials up here. This holds up the whole entire structure. It's really messy up here. 
Um, yeah, more dials. I don't know why I put that there. Here is the inside of the... that. There's, like, the outside of the bunker. We'll see that in a second. Uh, more tubing, because, you know, it is an underground bunker. Here we have, like, a radio system with a uh, radar, um, a crate, and a lamp again. Okay, oh, sorry about that. Um, oops, uh, okay. A bit tricky. Here we have these stairs up, and this hatch actually opens up with a locking mechanism, which I'll show it opening up later, but basically you switch this piece and this um, opens this hatch. So here is a German trooper. I made him as a, like a veterian. He's holding the German, I forgot the, uh, this weapon's name, but it I think it's Strauber 40 something. Um, it's a common machine gun from World War II. He is just checking the radars and gonna go up to battle. So he's walking this way. And then over here we have another Vitarian. This guy's like a well a badass soldier. I just made him. He turned out pretty cool. He has like a damaged eye, like World War One Vitarian. He's got a knife and a um, light gray, a Star Wars blaster, and a quiver on his back. Because why not? So we'll just put him out of the way for now. Um, here on the bunker we have a crate with ammunition, more grills to represent, like, you know, the tubes and stuff. This guy, he is holding the ammunition belts, and he's also got a binoculars, so yeah, he's pretty, he's like a technician, Get him out of the way. And here we have the guy with the MG-40. Now, this is a custom gun, I got the normal Star Wars blaster to cut off the scope, and I think it turned out really accurate. Here's the guy, he's using a brick arm helmet. As well, I only had a few of those, so I had yeah, and he's using like general versus um, minifigure torso. So let me just put him back. As you can see, there's a space over there Oops, for the gun. So let me just put him back real quickly. Just set him up real nice back there. Ah. Okay. Wait, almost there. Ah, sorry guys. Okay. He is set up over there. Um, this ammunition belt I just made with gold studs. It falls a lot, so I just leave it over there. And here we have the technician. Okay. So this is the main bunker. As it's the biggest, well, not the main, but it's like the biggest bunker because it's underground. So this ladder goes up, and I really like this part of the bunker. So, yeah, this is one of my favorite parts of the bunker. Okay, so let's move back out up here. Well, you guys didn't see up here yet, but I want to show you guys this side first because it has the hatch. As you can see, the hatch is over here, but it is really um, camouflaged in my opinion. As there's like overgrown grass everywhere. Here we have a sniper who, in my opinion, is in like the best advantage point of the mock. As you can see, I put a driver's helmet on him and a brick arms aren't a sniper. So yeah, he looks pretty cool up here, like taking shots at the men. I'm not saying that's cool, but you know. Um, I really liked how this turned out. Let me get you guys a look from the front. Which looks pretty cool. Uh, okay. And now let me show you guys opening the hatch. So I showed you guys earlier that there is like a little spinning piece. So you turn that and this just falls out. And like this it looks really cool as well. Here we you can see some concrete from the bunker coming out. Um, nice foliage. Good detail in my opinion. More concrete appearing here. Uh, this is the side of the other bunker. So let me show you guys over here how this looks. It looks alright in my opinion. As you can see it's detailed for camouflage. So you just push this up, turn this piece, and it is locked. Locked. So yeah, that is pretty cool. Now if you guys want to see the top of the other bunker, we can see concrete, reinforced concrete, um, a bunch of these leaves over here, which makes it look really cool. Uh, more rock formations to show it's like in the rock. So here's the front. This shield actually comes off um, to allow better view. And it does move a tiny bit, but I won't do that because I think it looks really cool like this. 
Over here we have more concrete, and this is like a little barrier where they can shoot off. Here we have a nice little side, and here we have an explosed house. This is also part of an explosed building. So yeah, let's move on to the explosed house, and then we'll move on into the main uh, HQ, well, into the other bunker. So, oops, okay. Let's put him back over there. So this here is the other side, and here you have the explosed house. Now, let's take a good close view of this. As you can see, this is really detailed. Um, this is a mach machine gunner's post, if you guys didn't notice before. Here we have nice detail, like this house was like blown up and they just took advantage. Here we have this machine gunner. Um, I can't get a good view, let's see. Here, this is a good view of the machine gun. I used a stud shooter piece, as you can see, put around disc handlebars and... Voila, that's that. Here have the guy using a brick arms helmet again. That just fits over there. And he's sitting on like a little concrete piece. More concrete <laughs> shown from the bunker under. Um, and here we have this scared soldier who came with him like to get some shots at these soldiers. Because, you know, everybody was scared in D-Day and stuff. Well, yeah. Here we got like three ammunition boxes. Um, a beer can bottle or just a bottle of drink. Um, a, here there's a hole that leads into the bunker for breathing. This is meant to simulate it, but yeah. Here I have this nice little lake. I just put like greenery into it because I thought, why not? It's a good contrast in my opinion. Here we can see the walls of the bunker. And this here is the main door of the bunker. Well, yeah, the only door. And, um, it does open out, which is pretty cool, as you can see in there, the bunker. And, yeah, it does open out. I didn't make it to lock, though. And it does look cool. So now, finally, let's move into the main bunker, where the, um, general of the Germans is at. And you can see him over here. Um, there's a small little lamp at the top. Um, let me take him here. This is the general. I, I used an angry clone face on him. He looked pretty cool. Lucius Malfoy's torso. Um, it's got a little binoculars. Let's take him out of the way for now. Here we have some... Oops, piece falling off. Here we have some ammunition crates. Just basic. Um, for this machine gun. Which does move. So, there you guys. A better, better look at that. And it goes here, the ammunition. Here we have a German soldier. Who is operating the machine gun. Which is also, you know, here we have, like, a sniper who's using, um, the normal, you know, Star's Blaster. I used an Imperial Officer for him, didn't have any more torsos. But he still turned out pretty nice. And he just sits there taking shots at the allies. Um, I don't know if you can see. Let me just take these crates out of the way. But there, here, we have a nice piping which might bring gas down under to the other bunker which in my opinion looks really good these crates can be like stack um ammunition crates can be really stacked up which create something really nice uh like a nice little flow in my opinion and yeah we have the general um the commander of the bunker who is pretty angry um cuz they, they probably will lose this battle. So, yeah guys, this is the mock in itself. If you guys want to see more about the mock, like weapons, designs that I used, I will be making a mock design video which should come out pretty soon after this video. So, yeah guys, this is one of my biggest mocks and one of my favorites and best in my opinion. So, stay tuned for more. Please comment what you guys liked about it. Um what do you want to see next? And yeah, stay tuned for more gaming videos, which those will come up for my 50th special video. Yeah, that's going to come up. I'm really excited. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Please like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned, guys.